second day of the annual conference of Quebec we met. Yesterday we had a full day with a very interesting keynote speech by Professor Pierluigi Sacco. We also um, presented the achievements of the Quebec we met project and we had the chance to hear from the entrepreneurs, some of the entrepreneurs that have received funding from Quebec for met After that we had a very interesting session moderated by uh, Dr. Yane Fumishfar on strategies for job creation in the arts and culture. And after that, we had also the chance to hear from the best practices that have been published on the Grand Format website. And also we had some spin sessions with incubators, access to finance actors, and other stakeholders that uh, provide opportunities for entrepreneurs. So it was a very interesting day. And today we are here for the second day of this annual conference. We will start with a panel discussion on the art of progress, a dialogue on creativity as a cross-cutting theme to change. It will be moderated by uh, Kirsty Furhat, our colleague at EMEA, and we will also have the introduction by the director of the Grand Format Project and the president and founder of EMEA, Professor Ayadi. After that, we will have a short coffee break and we will continue with an interactive panel discussion on addressing the disenabling in the culture and creative industries. This session will be moderated by Wafa Fulu Ai Belgazem. And after that, we will have the closing remarks of the annual conference. It's important to note that from 2.30 until 3.30 uh, CET, so the Central European time, we will have a networking session where we invite all of you to go to the networking fluid space on the, on the platform. And you will be able there to meet with some coaches that we have engaged for this activity with all the entrepreneurs that have joined us in this annual conference, the business support organization, and so on. We really encourage all of you to join us in the afternoon so you can exchange with all these stakeholders that will be involved in this interactive networking session. So without further ado, I give the floor to EMEA's president and founder and the director of the Crack for Med project, Professor Rima Yali, who will introduce the, top, the topic of uh, creativity as a cascading theme to change. So thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, Maria. Thank you, everybody, for joining this uh, panel. I think this panel is essential because really we are trying to delve into creativity as a force for uh, change and transformation. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to um, emphasize the fact that we are living in a very uh, complex um, uh, era of uh, global societal uh, challenges, which are becoming ever more complex and uh, they are changing quite rapidly, uh, which really calls for complex, creative, innovative solutions that are really essential to uh, provide us uh, the possibilities to uh, find the appropriate mechanisms to respond to those challenges. And I think one of the most invaluable assets, which is in fact uh, essential to our uh, transformation as a society, as an economy, and also uh, at the planetary level, is uh, the creativity. The creativity is essentially uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, help us to transform our uh, uh, initial settings and providing us innovative solutions to in fact, uh, dealing with the uh, complex challenges that we have. Uh, now, if, if, if we look uh, clearly into uh, the social uh, dynamics, I think the social dynamic uh, creativity acts as a unifying force. It's really bridging gaps and uh, trying to foster the sense of uh, collaboration understanding between different populations and enhancing empathy with, via uh, specific expressions, for example, the art expressions, these are uh, personal expressions and that has really uh, a, a dimension which go beyond, in fact, sometimes words and it really transcends into what we uh, uh, like to uh, see. Also, it goes uh, beyond conventional norms. It enables us the completion of inclusive societies. And inclusive societies is one of the key uh, methods of the SDGs. Uh, and in fact, inclusive society also means that giving uh, uh, single voices to everybody, all the populations, youth, women, uh, different ethnic groups, and so on, and every individuals to uh, to have a potential to contribute uh, to uh, the solutions within the social uh, dynamics. 
Now turning to the economic systems, creativity is essential. I mean, it's really uh, the engine of innovation, of transformation, of growth, of development. And also it gives us uh, the pillar for uh, our well-being and flourishing. Uh, it, it really um, uh, drives the development of uh, groundbreaking uh, technologies, business models, reshaping industries and economies. And it allows us to be differentiated, in fact, and bringing our development uh, models into another level of, uh, of, 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 uh, of growth. And it's not only uh, about generating money or generating wealth in terms of the financial terms, but it really allows us to redefine value. And value is uh, created in system that nowadays prioritize sustainability, equity, and well-being and flourishing uh, for all. So this is what we need to really uh, break the frontiers and trying to uh, break what we have done, of course, in terms of our reference economic models, which uh, so far has only focused on specific uh, value, which is the financial value, shareholder value, for example, but we need to go beyond and create value beyond frontiers that would contribute uh, systematically to our individual uh, well-being. Uh, and finally, um, when it comes to the pressing uh, need of environmental sustainability and the combat of climate change, creativity is the, in the core and it empowers us to envision uh, a kind of a, um, I would say, a harmonious uh, coexistence with nature uh, that inspires uh, our solutions to, in fact, be in harmony with our planet, uh, delicate balance. We can see it every day uh, with the global warming, with increasing pollution, climate, uh, with increasing uh, emissions. And this really is breaking this delicate balance that we have had, uh, uh, we have had uh, for, 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 for years of our existence. So I think renewable energy solutions and technologies, uh, urban, uh, I would say sustainable urban designs, creative initiatives that are paving the way for future uh, where uh, where we can progress as humans and it is not it does not even and it should not in fact come at the expense of this balance in our planet so we need to be within uh, within the earth that is balanced that we provide us with the minimum minimum resources that we uh, with, uh, that we need so in fact uh, we are nowadays and i see it from an economic and geopolitical perspective we are in a very uh, delicate uh, uh, juncture uh, we need a path forward and this path forward it has to be anchored into a, a creative uh, i would say dynamic uh, collective creative dynamic uh, which in fact will allow us to deal with our uh, in interconnected challenges with, in fact, uh, interconnected solutions and collaborative solutions. So the solutions will not come uh, from, uh, I would say, in a silo uh, approach, but rather in a collaborative and interconnected uh, approach. And, and this is also will harness our uh, creative capacities, uh, which allow us to uh, aspire for a change and in fact, uh, turning all those obstacles that we're seeing into innovation, into more resilience, which will allow us to support uh, our um, well-being and beyond even well-being. Uh, I mean, I, I talk about well-being because I think we need to go beyond growth, beyond economic growth. Uh, we need to uh, emphasize our flourishing our as uh, societies. Uh, which will allow us to uh, enhance our prosperities and uh, also sustainability of the planet. And I think uh, for, uh, for this, uh, this will really set uh, the scene into uh, the transformative power of uh, creativity. And of course, um, for us, uh, this uh, project or initiative, CREACT for uh, Creative Mediterranean, is at the center of it and uh, today we are all embarking in this journey of transformation uh, and together we should and we must in fact uh, unlock all the potential uh, of our creative minds uh, that should shape uh, a better future which is uh, sustainable for all.
So with this, I would like to uh, thank the panelists, uh, and I would really like to listen what has been done in different areas on how we could uh, really um, harness uh, creativity and trying really to uh, use it as much as possible for our prosperity and for our well-being. So back to you, Christy. Thank you very much, Rim, for this, these opening um, remarks. And um, I think it's very inspiring, the words that you've said about transformative actions, collaborative actions. It's a great way to start this, this discussion. Um, I'm going to start by introducing um, the speakers we have today. Um, so we have uh, Matthias Rode, who is the managing partner at The Mindshift, uh, co-founder and managing partner and also co-founder of the Sonophilia Foundation, which works on neuroscience and creativity um, and how to enhance cognitive function using, using creativity. Uh, we'll hear from him a little bit later on. We have Salvador Simon, who is um, the adjunct director of a mental health chair um, of the University of Vic. Um, and we'll hear from him a little bit later on on how mental health and creativity intersect. Um, and we also have Julia Ferraresi, who is the um, who is the uh, sorry, I have to find my my notes. She's the social and civic affairs uh, project manager at the Union for the Mediterranean, and she's specialised in gender equality and um, women's empowerment and youth. So she'll be focusing on that. So we have lots of different um, cross cutting areas. But first, um, we want to see a video from Mr. Theo Edmonds. Now, Theo is based in uh, California and uh, or in Denver, sorry. And at this time, he's not available. He's sleeping. So um, he's prepared a short video for us on um, his expertise, which is on um, wonder and how wonder and awe and uh, creativity all link together. So I'm going to share my screen now and we will hear from Theo on, um, on what he has to say on this very interesting topic. If you let me know that you can see and hear this okay, I would really appreciate it. Okay. Hi, my name is Theo Edmonds and I'm a cultural futurist. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. And today I want to talk to you about where wonder meets innovation. These images are from the James Webb Space Telescope. I believe these images show us not a difference, but a shared past, present, and future simultaneously. It doesn't matter if you're a public sanitation worker in a small town or the CEO of a tech corporation in a big city, or a neurodiverse kid like I was, learning how to navigate space is not designed for me, growing up in the mountains of Appalachia. These images remind us that Stardust is the one thing that connects us all. Stardust is our only tool. The same Stardust makes up the only two things that are responsible for everything that we can feel, touch, taste, hear, and see in what we call the economy. Things that come from the earth and human imagination. And if we go back far enough, all knowledge began as imagination. It started with the first time one of us looked up at the stars and thought, I wonder what that's all about. It's that instinct to know the unknown. You can think of this as our head instinct. And then there is the instinct that pulses through us, and we feel it when we're with our friends. It's that state of feeling like we matter and we're connected to others. It's the instinct to belong well-being instincts of the heart. And then finally, there's the instinct of our hands. Even in nature, we see it as trees intertwined with the forest around them. The instinct to have autonomy and self-determination, but at the same time, to join with others to do more than any one of us are capable of doing on our own. These are the instincts that guide our imagination. We connect our head, heart, and hands we synchronize our internal and external experiences of the world. So as you begin your new adventure with Crack for Mouth, you come to your own stories, not who you are, and the stories you're with you. But are those stories true? Have you ever stopped to consider whose imagination are you living and working in? Here's what I mean. The 
World Economic Forum notes that the human brain is wired in a way that makes objectivity difficult. This space makes us prone to bias. We currently know that there are 180 and count cognitive biases shaping how we process information and more versus in reality. We also know something else. If innovation is the goal, the center of culture is probably not the place to look. Innovation does not take place in the center. Innovation, the stories we become always, starts at the edges. Here we find that art is often the cultural oxygen breathing objectivity and possibility into many of the things that may feel too heavy to even have, let alone use as a catalyst for developing new ways of knowing, being, and doing. Art is an amazing tool of discovery and reconciliation. Innovation is not change. It change brings opportunity for sure, but it also brings unintended consequences and even potential loss. Take, for example, the accelerated pace of our lives due to the impact of technology and the digital, digital integration of our lived experiences. See, human development was once local and linear across generations. Not too long ago, a grandmother and her great 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 granddaughter would live similar lives. But today, a mother and her daughter will live radically different lives because of the pace of technology alone. It's an acceleration of the pace that our human brains are not wired for. It's likely one of the causes of our declining well-being, and it carries potentially serious implications for long-standing pillars of economic development playbooks. For example, cities know that small business, entrepreneurship is the lifeblood of the other economy. In America, for example, entrepreneurs create the vast majority of new jobs upon which we rely for economic growth. Entrepreneurship goes well beyond the traditional notions of an MBA type entrepreneur. In the U.S., based on census data, nearly 34% of U.S. artists were self employed entrepreneurs, compared with just over 9% of all workers. Yet, this path is not without its challenges. 2023 study highlights that 75% of entrepreneurs are worried about their mental health and well being. And they face unique pressures with significantly higher rates of depression, attention deficit disorder, and substance abuse compared to other professionals. The harsh reality is that 9 of 10 startups will fail. And for many, the downfall is linked to gaps in what we call social brain capital. Crucial brain skills like creativity, thinking, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, resilience, curiosity. Without these human skills, even the most promising ventures can falter, leading to problems that fail to resonate with customers. Understanding and nurturing these skills is the key. It's not just about innovative ideas. It's about the human capabilities that bring these ideas to life. We often think of governments and institutions as foundational in this work. But here's the hard truth. Everything is invented. Everything is always morphing into what will become next. Everything first begins as a story we tell in our minds. You see, the origin of the word genius is the protective spirit of a person or place understood this way. Genius is not an individual achievement. It is the shared success of a group capable of sitting within the creative tension it takes long enough to get to deeper, more meaningful questions. It is a journey that navigates from current reality to the aspirations of where we aim to be. In this work, there are three questions that a chief wonderation officer must always keep in mind. Do you understand the cultural source code of the innovation project being developed? How are you working toward creative outcomes? And have you accounted for the key drivers that will impact public acceptance of the innovation? A cultural source code is the context of an innovation project. It refers to the underlying set of cultural narratives, values, norms that are embedded in a community or an organization. And it's they're always expressed in different ways. It's expressed in the arts, scientific research, entrepreneurship, business leadership, educational systems, 
all of these have a cultural source code. If you understand how to see it, how to find it, if you understand how to make the invisible visible, unbelievable things that become possible. The second question you must always ask is, what is the process you're using for creativity? You see, creativity isn't just about the arts. Creativity science isn't just one research discipline. It involves many areas ranging from cognitive, behavioral, and social brain science to management research and cultural anthropology. However, new research is beginning to shift the focus of creativity as a process. This exciting new research investigates how our minds work with being creative, directing our internal thoughts toward a specific innovative goal. This evolving approach underlines that creativity isn't just about an outcome. It's about more and more how we think and navigate together and individually and get into the next place. This means that you should be in the habit of regularly bringing together your arts and science and entrepreneurial communities to engage with each other in a regular creativity process and skill building platform. If you're only doing this kind of thing when there's some kind of scratch focus on the issue of the day, you're likely not going to be able to make the traction that you need in order to produce the outcomes that you desire. There are three elements to creative cognition that drive this perception. Memory, attention, and cognitive, cognitive control. Creativity thinking is not just about having good ideas. It's a complex process involving the elements of memory, your idea of being, attention and focus, place that you direct your mental spotlight, and cognitive control. Imagine this as the conductor of the first. It helps you to manage your thoughts, balancing between the ideas that flow and reining them in to stay on track. There are three types of creativity Margaret Bowden puts forth that can help you understand what you're looking at when you're talking about the change and innovation. Exploratory creativity, that's where you're investigating or working within the bounds of something that is known, an individual discipline. Those disciplines have gatekeepers that tell you that innovation is not going on. Then there's combinatory creativity where you take disparate ideas from different parts of life and you put them together to form something new. And there's transformational creativity. That's where you change the rules of the game itself. It's like when you reimagine urban spaces in unprecedented ways. You can use this wonder base wheel the next time you're contemplating and are trying to work together in a group to produce a new idea and product or service. We've reduced some immensely difficult and complex fields of science into these four basic access points. Beauty, trust, joy, and wonder. Just through these four spectrums, you can navigate into exciting new ways for servicing new ideas and using the emotions and the psychological and cognitive processes of the brain find new pathways forward in ways that you may not have done otherwise. Wonder is not just a whimsical feeling. When you view it this way, wonder is a strategic asset. It drives adaptability and resilience, qualities essential for visionary leadership in an ever-changing landscape. Adaptability is about navigating change with agility and foresight. Wonder keeps the mind open to those promoting a culture of continuous learning and evolution. Resilience is the ability to recover from setbacks and to adapt to adversity. It's a fundamental question in organizations of every shape, size, and kind. Wonder fosters resilience by cultivating a mindset that sees beyond immediate obstacles, focusing on long-term visions and possibilities. For Chief Wondervation Officers, Integrating wonder into your leadership approach means more than just overseeing projects. It's about an inspiring a collective vision. It's about creating an environment where curiosity thrives, ideas flourish, and people feel connected to a larger purpose. I challenge you to embrace wonder in your innovation work of all kinds. So you set the stage in this way, not only for imagining a new reality, but for bringing people along the path. As community members, as 
design of participants all working together in a positive change. You can harness wonder to inspire more engaged teams, innovation, solutions in an organization that not only functions efficiently, but also resonates with all of its stakeholders on a deeper, more meaningful level. And that is my hope. Okay, um, so thank you, Theo, um, from, from Denver, where you're sleeping. I think this was a great introduction to the, the topic, um, and it links a lot with the expertise of our, of our participants here. So I'd first like to welcome um, onto the, the stage, the screen, Salvador Simon. I don't know if you're, are you there, Salvador? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. So, um, yeah, your expertise is in um, mental health and creativity, and I think this really links nicely <coughs> with, um, with Theo's uh, introduction. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hoping you could give us some kind of successful um, examples or case studies of the work you've been implementing between mental health and, and creativity. So the screen is yours. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to share my screen too. Do you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to be in this amazing and important event. It's a pleasure to see great colleagues as Rima Yadi and just, of course, listening wisdom worms from Deal. So my short talk, it's going to be about the connections between mental health and creativity and how really creativity is an amazing resource to improve the mental health and mental well-being of our populations. First thing I think we need to reflect and to remember is that uh, to enjoy art, to participate from culture, to be creative is part of the human rights. So when we allow people to develop creativity using art, culture, visiting museums, etc., we are just fulfilling one of the most important human rights. On the other hand, if we think about mental health, we realize that in this book, uh, environment for volatility, complexity, uncertainty, and ambiguity, uh, we, when we see internationally, the, the rankings of mental health are really uh, in a very bad situation. For example, we just consider people with dementia, have depressions, uh, suic so many suicide. For example, in Spain, suicide is one of the most important, the first cause of that under 34 years. And of course, uh, we always have found connections between art and mental health. So for so many of you, maybe Shafut Abu Das choose the painting that can represent this book uh, environment with the climate change, with everybody, with every, all these problems that uh, Professor Ayadi was referring to, the war, the climate change. Maybe so many of us will choose the, the, this painting from Munch that he was uh, like the painting, they, they say it's the painter of the human soul. It has been a strong connection between art and mental health and creativity and mental health. If I mention artists like Basquiat, Gauguin, Toulouse Lautrec, Modigliani, Schiele, Van der Goes, Constant Meyer, Jericho, Kirchner, and Nussbaum, or even Pollock, they have had in their life history a strong connection with mental health issues and alcoholism or all the problems. So mental health, creativity. So it's not just about Van Gogh. That is the typical, typical example. So as possibilities, we are in a moment that there are increasing needs of well-being of the population, social participation, mental health, and at the same time, they are decreasing the resources. So what we do is to use the cultures, the art centers to 
create programs there so we are adding value. It's not just an art center, cultural center, also it's a space for well-being and social participation. So we started in 2015 working with the Center of Contemporary Culture of Barcelona with people with mental health problems, people with dementia. And you see, this is amazing. The scientific literature says that dementia, for example, takes longer to affect creativity, artistic expression, and artistic appreciation. And you know, creativity is a key aspect for problem solving, and problem solving is a key aspect for mental health. So it's extremely important to empower, to allow this creativity as a great a strategy for resilience. Of course, we do research and we publish based on these projects, mixed research, but it's not that. So other examples, why not to use music? So for example, we're working with people with mental health problems, people with dementia, people with intellectual uh, disabilities, and we don't do in a boring room in a boring hospital. We go to the National Auditorium of Barcelona where musicians from the National Orchestra play music for them. After that, they see the National Orchestra performing. But the most important, at the last part, they create music. They play. So creativity, of course, is enjoying, but especially is performing. So this was a very interesting project we also developed in 2018. In mental health, we had also great projects with great institutions like the Museum Decent, you know, it's one of the best museums in, in, in Spain. And it's not just about uh, that mental health people with problems is dealing with a stigma because they do normal activities in normal contexts. It's also that we are empowering the mental well, mental health, the well-being of the full population. So also we are restore, restoring the capacity of the world face people that has depression, people that has anxiety through our programs in the museums, thanks to art, thanks to culture, they're improving mental health well-being. They are improving happiness, they're improving social connection, but they also improving productivity and other important aspects. We also have been working in Fundación Cerralbas in Portugal with mental health, and we are extremely happy because in my city is not just that working with one institution. We are working with three museums, two orchestras, two historical sites, one library. So we can say we have involved all the city with all the resources of the city. And we work with people with mental health problems and also people, refugees, uh, immigrants. So. And last example, uh, we can be creative. For example, we are saying that mental health with young people is a strong problem today. So what we do, we are working together with artists, Rapsus Clay. So we teach the students, we empower them uh, for rap music because they love rap. They say they are rappers, but they don't know to sing hip hop or rap. So we teach them how to rap, how to sing hip hop. And then through that, they express in a very creative way all their emotional problems. So this is an example of one project we are developing to promote mental health among the young people. So I have just seven minutes. I hope it was not too much. So thank you so much for, for this invitation. Oh, it's a pleasure to work with you. And here you have my contact. If you have any further question, it's gonna be my pleasure to, to cooperate with you. Thank you so much, Salvador, for these um, real examples of the things you've been implementing. Um, I think clearly we're in a kind of mental health crisis at the moment. And as Theo said in his uh, video, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are worried about their mental health and well-being. So these activities that you have just explained are, are really amazing projects to, to drive these kind of um, solutions to this problem in, a, in an innovative way. Um, so I'd like to welcome now um, to the floor Julia Fevarezi um, of the Union for the Mediterranean. Um, so Julia will be taking a little bit of a different angle on this approach um, as using art as progress and focusing on, on gender equality and youth aspects. So Julia, the, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirsty. Thanks to uh, EMEA and Diamet for inviting me to this important um, annual conference. And um, exactly as you said, I work for the Union for the Mediterranean. I will share now my presentation 
and I hope I will stick to the 10 minutes. Um, the Union for the Mediterranean doesn't focus mainly on um, creative and cultural industry, so I'm really learning, thanks very much to Salvador, to Reem and to the Tio's videos because I'm really learning as well, so thank you very much. For those of you who do not know the Union for the Mediterranean, it's an intergovernmental inter organization based in Barcelona, um, composed by 43 member states from the, Union for, for, from the European Union and from the MENA region. Its main aim is to um, enhance regional cooperation focusing on women and youth. And we um, have an action driving methodology which is called the three Ps because we focus mainly on um, policy because we have a political framework which gives us the mandate to work on such topics which is usually the ministerial declaration adopted by the 43 member states on the different topics we focus on. Then we have the platforms, which is a network of experts and stakeholders and national focal points from the member states that gather every year. And then we also have the projects that we help implement and that we can also level with the UFM level in order to give visibility. We mainly focus on human development in the uh, division of education and employment, higher education and research, and social and civil affairs, which is the division I work for. And we also focus on sustainable development in the division of water and blue economy, energy and climate action, and transport and urban development. Related to the work of the UFM and the culture and creative industries, I will mention some activities and projects we focused on. And then later on, I will explain the uh, support that our division gave to young entrepreneurs from the Minas Incubator, which also works with Create Format, to participate in the Delta Festival. So in 2016 to 2019, um, there was an EU-funded project called Creating a Regional Platform for the Development of Culture and Creative Industry and Cluster in the Southern Mediterranean that was labeled by UFM. Um, the main outcome of this project was to do a mapping of the major actors working in the creative and cultural industry in the Southern Mediterranean and also to um, provide technical support to one initiative on this, in this sector in each country, and also to establish uh, cultural and creative industry centers that were um, used, served as a, as, a re, as a national and a regional database. In 2018 and 2019, the UFM participated as well in the Creative Forum in Slovenia, where the challenges and enable success in factors of the culture and creative industry, such as um, access to finance, creation of networking, and um, mapping of major actors working in the sector were highlighted. And in 2021, the UFM also participated in the conference Future Unlocked, in which um, it was highlighted by the UFM how the creative economy is key in assuring a more inclusive employment in the region. And um, the UFM reiterated its support to this uh, industry. Related to the social and civil affairs, that I, it's the division I work for, we work mainly on gender equality, women empowerment, youth empowerment, disability, and civil protection. In the realm of women empowerment, we have, as I briefly mentioned before, a political mandate that is given by the fifth UFM Ministerial Declaration on Strengthening the Role of Women in Society, which was adopted by the 43 UFM member states in October 2022, and which focuses on three, on three main priorities, which are women economic empowerment, women in climate change, and violence against women and girls. Since 2022, with our stakeholders and with our co-presidency, we have been working on the elaboration of the roadmap for implementation of this ministerial declaration that will be presented in the UFM high-level women, a high-level conference on women, which takes place every two years, and this year will take place in uh, Cyprus on 16 and 17 of May. Related to the priority of women economic empowerment, which is the one in line with uh, the idea of job creation, I can highlight some activities we will focus on in 2024 as we are organizing the Closing the Gender Gaps in the MENA Financial Sectors Conference together with the Union of Arab Banks that will take place in 
on 6 and 7 of March in Cairo. And this conference will bring together senior bankers and entrepreneurs in the MENA region to shed light on the main challenges faced by women entrepreneurs in scaling up their business. Besides the panel and the technical roundtables, there will be as well a um, ring the bell ceremony for gender equality and also a matchmaking session for women entrepreneurs in order to have a more concrete impact. In the realm of med tech women, which is um, the network of women working uh, in tech in the MENA region, in the Euro Mediterranean region, we will launch the network and also some trainings in order to provide these women with uh, technological and digital skills. We will also implement a pilot project for an incubation like program for early stage startups working on waste management in Lebanon, which is um, inspired by the I the UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization Idea Up Incubator Program, in which women that are in this first stage of um, creating their startup, they can be in touch with personal mentors through a hybrid training. Um, in this case, the, the specific topic will be waste management. I can highlight as well um, a past initiative, which is um, the Women Business Forum of UFM, which is a platform that offers female entrepreneurs and women-led businesses an uh, opportunity to take their business to the next uh, level. And in the last three years, we have been benefiting from the cooperation of UNIDO. So the 2023 Women Business Forum took place in Tunisia in October, and it uh, focused on the impact of Industry 4.0 on women entrepreneurs. There were in this uh, framework as well some technical panels, uh, institutional remarks, but as well some concrete activities such as B2B meetings for women entrepreneurs in the MENA region to connect and network uh, among them. And also we visited a women-led um, startup funded by uh, Hajer Derich, which is one of the beneficiary of a UNIDO project on promoting women empowerment for inclusive and sustainable industrial development in the MENA region. In the dossier of youth, we also have a political mandate, which is our UFM Youth Strategy 2030, that was adopted in 2021 by our 43 member states. In November 2023, we also uh, adopted the UFM Youth Agenda, and the main priorities are environment and climate action, education and employment, and social inclusion and participation. Within the framework of the UFMU strategy and the aim to uh, strengthen collaboration in order to empower youth in the MENA region, in the Euro Mediterranean region, we have, as I briefly mentioned before, supported through the GIZ, the German Cooperation Fundings, the participation of 12 Tunisian young entrepreneurs from the Minasa Incubator, which is a part of Create for Med, um, and to participate in the Delta Festival that took place from 23 to 27 of August 2023 in Marseille, France. These 12 young entrepreneurs, they came from eight different startups working on the creative and cultural industry in Tunisia. And they managed to, to, to go to, to the Delta Festival in which there was also a, a startup village where they could show and gain visibility on their own startups. There were, in fact, some key performance indicators that were agreed with UFM and Minasa. And these youth entrepreneurs, they managed to uh, achieve this KPI, being, uh, for example, the uh, participation in workshop during the Delta Festival, the um, possibility to uh, raise awareness on the Tunisian culture and creative industry to the uh, 120,000 participants in the festival. Um, they also managed to lead some follow-up activities, for example, a meeting with the Delta Festival organizer to foster collaboration and meetings with uh, institutional representatives of the um, Marseille City Council in order to um, talk about future projects. They carried out 77 networking meetings during the Delta Festival um, the, the participation in the Delta Festival. And they also, these young entrepreneurs, they also um, shared some strategies for 
adapting their structure to the international market. And since this participation in the Delta Festival managed to, uh, it was important for them to gain visibility on their own startups in the culture and creative industry in Tunisia, 70% of them, they shared their participation on social network. So this is um, in general what we do at the UFM and more specifically on creative and cultural industry. I believe this project was a good collaboration strategy with GZ, UFM, Minasa and the young entrepreneurs to um, give visibility to startups and to the creative and cultural industry in, the, in our Euro-Mediterranean region. So thank you for your attention and I will be happy to give more details or answer any questions if needed. Thank you, Kirsty, back to you. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, this was really amazing to see all of the work that you're doing at the UFM on this on this topic. Like, as we know, like women were half of the population, and we are a real driver to growth and progress. And obviously, in the creative industries, it's a huge, um, it's a huge number of people to contribute to it. Um, so thank you very much. We'll be coming back to you later in the questions and answers. I would like to tell highlight to everybody that if you want to ask a question to the panelists. You can use the Q&A button just at the right of your screen and I will keep an eye on that and we'll answer any of your questions. Um, but before that, we um, head to our final panelist, um, Mr. Matthias Rode. Um, he is the co-founder of the Sonophilia Foundation um, and he'll be speaking to us on another different um, cross-cutting theme, which is um, creativity and how we can use that for problem solving, particularly in, in technology and AI. So. I hand over to you for this next part of the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, good morning, everyone, um, or good day, um, wherever you are. I'd like to start by um, talking a little bit about what the Sonophilia Foundation is and how we came about. Um, this started as a group of um, leaders from various industries, um, from various geographic locations, meeting in a remote village uh, in Salzburg, near Salzburg, to spend uh, a weekend um, talking about inspiration and creativity in what they were all doing. Um, we got together um, in a retreat-like form uh, with lots of meditation, listening, uh, because listening is the beginning of being creative and um, being in a conversation. And then um, talks and demonstrations of um, interesting projects, inspirational projects that were going on in everyone's life uh, and also uh, problems that they were encountering. And quickly through these meetings that we had twice um, a year, um, we realized that the thread that was really uh, connecting all of these life stories and all of these ambitions to change the world for, for a better place was creativity. And um, the idea and the project were all about enabling creativity within organizations, um, trying to uh, bring the creativity of the people out in positive ways so that they can be used to, um, you know, reach goals within these organizations. And when we realized that um, creativity is this kind of superpower that allows all of these wonderful visions to become reality, but that at the same time, there is a, a general conception about creativity that was more like, oh, I'm not creative. You know, the crea creative folks are the artists, uh, the musicians, uh, the people in the innovation department. I just do my regular job. When we realized there was this disconnect between these two worlds, we decided to uh, turn Sonophilia into a nonprofit that is dedicated to um, bringing out um, the wonderful research that many people are doing around the world um, on creativity and communicating it to the public and enabling people to live a more creative life and to be creative problem solvers. So this journey um, started a couple of years ago. Um, we now have um, 
a nonprofit based in Munich in Germany uh, with about 40 to uh, 50 supporters, active supporters of the network who help us with the projects, who also contribute financially uh, to the goal of the foundation and who form a network um, of sonophilians, as we call our members around the globe. Um, we try to organize our community in a decentralized way. So every sonophilian, wherever they are, can have sonophilia events, can uh, form sub chapters of the um, uh, nonprofit uh, based in Munich. Um, and we also have a couple of central um, projects that were born out of this network that we try to support. First of all, we give out stipends to young researchers, um, PhD students, uh, postdocs who work on the intersection of neuroscience and creativity. Um, we also have events in Salzburg and elsewhere where we promote the science of creativity. We um, uh, co-organized um, the first cross-Atlantic uh, creativity congress um, which brought together researchers from various um, uh, places around the world um, to discuss recent trends in creativity research. But we also have more practically inclined uh, projects. Uh, and I'd like to spend a few minutes on highlighting two of these projects. First of all, as many of you know, in creativity research, there is um, some emphasis on the idea of uh, the Eureka moment the uh, moments in which you have a creative breakthrough. Um, and um, these moments are very powerful because whatever it is that you learn through such a Eureka moment will be retained much better in your memory and will become an essential part of uh, your cognitive uh, faculties. So it's a very um, strong method to actually learn new things. And um, we thought it would be very interesting to look at the way that our young um, kids learn in schools and um, how um, these Eureka moments can be used to um, create a new type of learning experience that is um, in a way deeper and um, more um, sustaining also. And so um, we started a project called Eureka World, which um, in a first step brings together young kids with people in a field that the kids are interested in who have achieved something already. For instance, um, we brought together a young student in robotics with um, David Hansen, who has developed um, one of the first and, and maybe most well-known um, humanoid uh, ro robots, Sophia, to talk and have an exchange of ideas. And uh, through fostering these kinds of um, environments, um, really try to uh, bring um, Eureka moments to these young kids. Hey, this is an amazing insight um, that I got through this conversation, and it's going to give me a lot of power and a lot of energy to pursue my path further. Um, the idea of um, the Eureka world is to now go into school curricula and think about these are all of the things that students should be learning in mathematics, for instance. Are there any topics that we can teach in such a way as to further Eureka moments when the students are engaging with the subject matter so that this sudden um, realization of insight um, is, is kept for a long time and is actually deepening their knowledge of whatever field they are studying. So this is a project that we started recently um, uh, in, the, in the field of education and creativity. Uh, another aspect which I want to highlight is this idea um, of creativity as a tool for problem solving. Uh, as we are all experts in this field of creativity, this is nothing new to us, but you will be surprised how many people out there in the world still believe that creativity is uh, something reserved for the geniuses, for the practitioners of art and music and other fields that are associated with uh, creativity. But creativity as a tool for problem solving is something that is everywhere around us. And we try to make that visible by 
creating a interconnected map of all of the problems that are still unsolved in this world. You take a, a scientific um, discipline, for example, and you map out all of the open questions, how they are related, when you consider them to be solved. And you create a, a decentralized global database of all these different perspectives on unsolved problems. And those become then focal points for collective creativity. When people say like, oh, this is an interesting problem. I'm also working on this. How can we collaborate? So we're building up a um, decentralized database um, that has a front end on the web where people can search the different types of problems, contribute to their solution and collaboratively get together to solve them. This is a, a new project for us. Um, we have been working together with the Foresight Institute in San Francisco and Ocean Protocol uh, in Berlin and Singapore to build a prototype of uh, this software. It's not yet publicly available, but we have a working prototype where researchers, where communities, where organizations can start to fill in the blanks on this map of problems that they are working on. And our goal is to really give the community of creative problem solvers a toolkit that allows them to coordinate, to, um, to enhance their efforts and to also learn from one another. Um, these are two of the projects that uh, our foundation, our very small foundation, I should say, is, is trying to kickstart. If you are interested in what we are doing, first of all, I welcome any questions you may have here in the chat, but also um, reach out to us via our website, sonophiliafoundation.org, and we are happy to collaborate, make new friends, and um, help um, further creativity in our contemporary world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Matthias. Um, this was very kind of inspiring, especially like um, the phrase you used about everybody being able to be creative. It's not just for innovators and artists. It really is for, for everyone. Um, so we're going to move to the, the questions and answers part of this session. We have about 15 minutes left. Um, so if you do have any questions or just comments, you'd like to, you know, reply to something that was said, please um, feel free to do so on the chat. Um, but first of all, I'd like to kind of talk about some next steps in, in, in your work about what you're doing. So we've talked about the activities that you have done and um, initiatives that you've launched and how they've been successful. But what's kind of next in your um, field of work. So Salvador, I'll start with, with you. Like what are the next steps for, for kind of creativity and mental health and what recommendations can you make for the Southern Mediterranean and how we can kind of um, push this forward? See, now we have the, developed the projects from 2015 in several institutions. And now we have achieved to move the art and culture and creativity for the well-being of the population at a city level. We have, we have achieved this at big city. It's a city of 40,000 people. So we have moved from one institution with one group of people to one city that all the art and cultural centers are promoting the creativity, the mental health, well-being, the social participation of all the citizens, but especially they offer special activities for people with mental health problems, people with dementia, refugees and migrants. So what we are doing is apart from escalating this project, now we are replicating. Now we're just presenting a European project that we hope so to collaborate with France and Portugal, just to be able to learn each other, to have a learning community and how we can promote uh, economic development, but in a sustainable way and in an excessive way, inclusive way, promoting art, culture, inclusion, uh, solidarity, equality, and ecology. That's our next goal. And of course, it will be wonderful to develop these kind of projects at any, uh, at any country that can be interested. We are doing consultancy work, have been developing the project in Canada. 
we help them to start at the Museum of Modern Art. And we also help the people in Georgia, the museum, they also uh, to start this kind of projects. And we started in Portugal. So if anybody is interested to start this kind of projects, we are welcome. It will be our pleasure to work with them. Thank you so much. I mean, I think the, the, the replication aspect is really key. We can have a successful pilot in one city, in one community, in one institution, and replicating it throughout other regions is obviously going to be really um, beneficial. See, just of... let me add that we are doing action research. So every time we do the project, we do research, mixed research. So we know that what we are doing is based on evidence. And also it helps us to improve and to the, the project every time we are developing. Hmm. Yeah, um, I think I'll, I'll move now to, to Julia because I think it's a nice kind of um, segue into this kind of collaboration aspect. You said, Salvador, that you work with, um, you know, the cities, the institutions, there's lots of different bodies working together. So, Julia, maybe you can elaborate a bit on the collaboration that you had with um, Minasa, GIZ and the entrepreneurs and what kind of other strategies we can have in the future to kind of launch inclusive and um, creative programs in, in the region? Yes, Kirsty, as we mentioned, uh, the culture and creative industry can really be, can really foster inclusive employment. We know that in the MENA region, it's a very young region and usually are the young people who come up with innovative and creative ideas and solutions and can therefore be employed in such um, industries. We know, for example, for the EU, European Union statistic that 47.7% of um, uh, the cultural employees in the culture and creative industry are women. Despite that, there are still many inequalities that are faced by women within this sector that are related to access to finance, to representativity, uh, leadership position uh, roles in this in this uh, creative and cultural industry as well as uh, safe space um, as with no harassment and um, the difficulty to manage the work-life balance being the creative and cultural industry sectors where sometimes flexible work hours are required and due to gender stereotype usually women are the one in charge of the care work so based on the experience we had and on the studies and report existing, uh, we thought about some recommendations that could be um, implemented towards a more inclusive creative and cultural industry. First of all, it would be a good, a good um, practice to establish a regional observatory on the situation of women and gender equality within the sectors in order to track and monitor progress and see where it's needed to do more. A good example of this is the um, French observatory, the Observatoire uh, entre hommes et femmes de la culture et la communication, that was established in 2013 and um, has some indicators such as, for example, the role, how, the percentage of women in leadership position, and every year they publish a report in order to track and to uh, monitor uh, change and progress and see where it's needed to do more. Second recommendation would be to enhance data collection because we've seen that we do not have sex disaggregated data on this, on this sector and in general this is an issue uh, because we cannot see where we need to really um, enhance inclusion. Third recommendation would be to create working group of expert in data collection and expert in the cultural and creative industry and also to um, implement a regional approach on monitoring and to see how to have a, to have a regional mechanism of monitoring um, for, for gender equality. A fifth recommendation would be to collaborate with international partners. What we have done for the young entrepreneurs in the Delta Festival was thanks to an international cooperation with the UFM, MINASA and the GIZ fundings. Sixth uh, recommendation would be to strengthen the ecosystem to give more support to the initiative of the civil society organization and the NGOs that work with women in this sector and they know the needs of the women in this sector in order to create safe space for women in creative and cultural industry. Then um, it would be important, of course, to reach to policymakers in order to have policies and to change the legal framework 
um, in order to have an inclusive uh, creative and cultural industry. And last but not least, to support initiatives that represent women in the sector, such as hackathon competition or prizes, where women are really represented because they constitute half of the workforce in this sector and they need to be recognized and represented for that. I, get, I believe the reports of each country of the six countries covered by the Create for Med uh, project is a very good example and a very useful initiative. Uh, of course, it states would collect more sex disaggregated data and implement the recommendation that um, were suggested. I'm sure we could really work through a gender inclusive environment within the culture and creative industry to foster inclusion, diversity and equal opportunities for all in the Euro Mediterranean region. Thanks. Thank you so much. Those um, were really kind of compre comprehensive and concrete policy recommendations. You can really see that there's um, real real potential for change in, in these industries. Um, I particularly liked the your, your focus on the data collection, as in correct for med and within the project. This is something that we're really um, keen on in the mapping feature. Um, there is a data observatory on the correct for med website where we can see um, the data that you're talking about, about women's involvement in the workforce um, and this, these kinds of um, data fields. It's on the Correct for Med website. I would encourage everybody to go and have a look at it. And perhaps a collaboration with the observatory that you mentioned could be good as a kind of sustainable initiative um, going forward. Um, and as you say, like within the project, we have a huge focus on women that most of our entrepreneurs are women, most of the trainees are women. So we're also really keen on driving this um, forward and putting it into practice. Um, so I will, I'd like to hear a little bit from Matthias as well on um, the kind of next steps of, of um, your work in terms of empowering youth and bringing creativity to the forefront in the, in kind of the workforce for making change. What, what mm -hmm. do you think about that? You know, as we are sort of a membership driven um, community, um, what's important for us is to um, reach out to new um, potential members who um, can support our work actively. And um, of course, you know, if someone wants to donate, that's fine too. But um, we're actually looking for people who are actively engaging with, with our um, projects. Um, so with that said, um, Specifically, we are trying to now find uh, partnerships with educators and um, potential pilot schools to implement uh, this idea of insight driven, Eureka moment driven education. And um, that would be an experiment. Uh, the outcome is really open. We don't know if we can actually create a curriculum that is based on Eureka methodology um or not if it is more conducible for let's say the sciences or other fields of study um, we would have to see that but um, if you are um, an educator if you are um, uh, someone who um, can be a partner as a pilot school then please do reach out for the um, network of connected problems um, the main bottleneck right now for us is to um, actually have developers, uh, people who can take um, our pilot, which is in an alpha version, and develop it further so that it can be used by communities of scientists, institutions, um, uh, communities around the world to actually input their um, data and how the problems are connected for them. So. Um, if you are in the field of developing um, specifically blockchain based technologies, um, but also web based um, interfaces, JavaScript and so on, and you, this strikes a chord with you, then please do reach out. I'm going to put my email in the in the Q&A section so people can also be in touch later on um, to take this one step further. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I think this brings us to a, a quite a nice close um, to the session. Um, if there's any comments, please um, let me know via the chat as we do have one or two minutes left. Um, but if not, I would like to thank all of our, our panelists today for their um, presentations. I think you've given us a lot of concrete examples and 
things that we can try and replicate um, within our, our respective fields. Um, and we can continue this discussion in the fluid space if everybody would like to head there as we now have a, a short coffee break for 15 minutes. Um, so you can head to the fluid space and connect with um, some of the speakers or with just each other. And then we will be back at 11.30 um, for the interactive panel discussion on breaking barriers, addressing disenablers in the cultural and creative industries. Um, this will be moderated by Wafa, and we have a, a great set of panelists um, lined up for that session. So thank you very much, everybody, um, and we, we stay connected. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsty. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a thank great. you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you.